Welcome back guys, it's Feroz at Decentralized Chain bringing you the latest news, reviews and blockchain tech. So today we are going to be reviewing yet another AI related ICO. This certainly seems to be the flavor of the early parts of 2018. There are a number of ICOs competing in this space and the market is slowly getting saturated. But let's have a look at decentralized machine learning and see what it is that they're planning to do within this space as well. So DML are looking to launch a protocol which is designed to expand the reach of untapped private data. The way they plan to do this is run an algorithm on users devices to ultimately make use of that private data without unleashing that private data but at the same time taking the outcomes from the algorithm that has been run on the device and providing that for the use of crowdsource analytics and prediction analytics so what does that really mean in practice what is it that they're actually bringing to the market well first of all if we have a look we have on-device machine learning without data extraction. So ultimately what that means is that they're planning to run the algorithms on your device without exposing the data or your personal data for that device. So ultimately they will just take the outputs that are generated and the private data stripped away for the use of crowdsource and prediction analytics. The next one is that they're looking at unleashing innovation from the periphery. What that means is that they are looking to create a AI developer community. So similar to what we saw in Effect AI, this is ultimately a marketplace which pretty much promotes or helps promote developers create their AI algorithms, put it on the marketplace, get other organizations to ultimately look at it, test it out and use it and obviously with an incentive to pay to use it as well. Then we've got connecting idle processing power of billions of devices. So the idea here being is that the algorithms will be run, and I'm assuming here on your mobile devices. So whilst they are idle, they will harness that grid technology of all these devices to run those algorithms, to get that prediction analytics, to get that crowdsource analytics that they're looking for. Then you've got mass participation in machine learning training. I mean, this is all related. I don't know if you know or you don't know, but when it comes to creating an AI algorithm, it doesn't necessarily just work off the bat. All AI algorithms require learning. And the way they do that is they push data sets out into the market. So human intelligence will then review that data in, uh, data set and then provide the outcomes of that data set or the results from the outcomes into the AI. And the AI will consume that in order to learn, in order to understand what it needs to do. And therefore that's how it evolves. Then you've got multi blockchain adoption. So the idea here being is that they want to become an agnostic protocol and working across multiple layers of blockchains. And then lastly, returning power to ecosystem owners. Ultimately, what that means is that they want to cut out the middleman and provide a direct to business, a direct to consumer crowdsource and prediction analytics. At the moment, this type of computational power that's required for crowdsource analytics and prediction analytics are really only available to the big corporations that have those deep pockets in, able, in order to be able to do that. Now let's actually have a look at what this looks like in practice. And what I mean by practice is I've reviewed their white paper and I do have to say it is one of the better white papers I've seen out there. It's very well thought, very well planned and very well sectioned and very detailed. Now, one thing that I really like, and in my line of work, I'm a product manager, I run my own product management consultancy, and I work with developers, I work with UX individuals to help them bring those ideas, those developments to life. And one of the best ways I find that is certainly starting with a flow diagram, a flow diagram that really explains the crux of what it is that we're trying to get out to the market. And one thing that I found in this white paper 
is really what I think is a great flow diagram. I'm going to go through this flow diagram and hopefully by the end of it you will understand what it is this project's looking to deliver and how it will deliver that for you. So let's start at the bottom. If we go here, we've got 1A, which is the customer. So here you've got a customer that is looking for a particular type of algorithm that they want to run or some particular type of prediction analytics that they're looking for. So they go into the marketplace and they have a look at the list. So here you've got the DML platform. Within here, you've got the marketplace management. So this is where all the algorithms will be stored. Now, remember when we said that they actually wanted to create a community so for developers to be able to start creating their algorithms, putting it out on the marketplace in order to get it tested, to kind of see what the results are, but ultimately to also to then sell to corporations, to organizations, to individuals who are looking for crowdsource analytics or prediction analytics. And so 1B on the left-hand side, you've got the developer section. They've got their go-to marketplace and they submit their algorithm for algorithm validation. Once that's done, it's within the marketplace and therefore is displayed. People can see exactly what it is that's out there and they can use that. Now, once a customer has chosen a particular type of algorithm that they want to use, it then creates a smart contract on the blockchain. So the smart contract being an exchange of a service. So they will ultimately pay for this particular protocol or for this particular algorithm to be used. And the smart contract will be there to facilitate a trustless transaction. What then happens is then this particular smart contract goes out to the distribution node, okay? And the distribution node will determine the list of eligible users that have the software installed on their devices and are ready to go and really give up that computational power in order to do that. So it will send the algorithms to those devices. The devices, which are gonna be step four here, which the data owner has, Okay, they will receive the encrypted algorithm, they'll run the algorithm, they'll generate the encrypted local machine learning prediction results. Once they've got that, they will then send those results back out to a federated node. So the federated node will act as an aggregator. It will take in all of the results from all the various devices. Just re remember that it's not gonna be the smart contract reaching out to one user what you're doing here is you're tapping into the grid of potential thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of users here. So you're getting all of that aggregated data into the federated node at step five. Once that's come through, it then goes into the reporting node. So the reporting node will build the reports, which will provide the results in a concise, unbiased manner. That then goes back in to the final report so they have that final report at step seven, which is then provided back to the customer that's looking for that. And then we've got the smart contract there to facilitate that altogether. So as you can see, they've really thought out the entire process. And I'm hoping that you've been able to follow through that process and not get too confused along the way. But to me, this speaks wonders. I mean, I can see exactly what it is that they're trying to do. And frankly, even though I am saying that this place or this particular concept is saturated, the way the white paper has been laid out, it is quite easy to read. It's not, I mean, yes, it's technical, but at the same time, I've been able to pick this up relatively quite quickly and go through some of the core components. I haven't gone through all of it, but I've gone through the gist of it to understand what it is that they're looking to do. And I understand what it is that they're trying to do. If I try and simplify it, they are providing a marketplace where you can go and buy your algorithms. Once you've bought that algorithm, then they're providing the computational power behind that in order to run that algorithm. Then they're providing the reporting facilities behind that in order to present that back to the consumer. And the consumer can then take that away and either use that to further train their AI or use that in terms of their own line of business, in terms of what it is that they want to do from that. So now that we've seen exactly what the product is about, let's move on to the prototype. So, you know, what I really like um, in any project is just as much as a well-written white paper, like the one that we've just gone through. And it's really easy to understand for anyone just to pick up just because of the way they've done the flow diagrams. It, it's just 
I can comprehend exactly what they're trying to do. It's not that technical in terms of trying to understand it and really convey the message to others. And what even helps even more is when you actually have a prototype to show and demonstrate that capability as well. And this is exactly what they have. They've got the DML prototype demo. I won't necessarily go through all of it and I'll leave the description in the bottom for you to have a look. But here, basically within the prototype, they give you all the functionality pretty much that they've spoken about within the white paper. So we're talking about searching and requesting and listing for machine algorithms. They've got the creation and the learning application request selection piece within there. They've also got running the actual algorithms. They've got submission of the learning results, generation of all the aggregated machine learning and the smart, con uh, smart contract transactions in DML as well, so the tokens for the machine learning models. They have it all. They have a significant portion of the white paper within their overall demo. So I would urge you guys to look at the description below. I've put the, I've put the link in to kind of have a look. It's about five minutes long, but it goes through the entirety of the white paper and really brings it out into a more of a reality in terms of what is possible. And this is, just a, this is just a prototype, which is delivering a significant portion of functionality that we've sort of gone through. So certainly this is really good in my opinion. Now, moving on to a team. So let's just see what the team is like. So when we go into the team, we've got quite a few number of people. We've got Victor Chung. Um, he's been a previous founder of two tech companies. Um, they've also won startup awards. He has a background within the full stack web app and smart contract development space. So he's proficient in Solidity, which um, as we all know, is ultimately the programming language on Ethereum to create your smart contracts, to create your dApps, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but as you can also see, he does have a significant background within the development space. We've also got Michael Kwok, who is the project leader director. He is also a founder of two tech companies with startup awards. I haven't looked into what type of awards they are, but clearly they've mentioned these types of awards and both of them have had these awards. Um, once again, well-developed, clearly has a background. Now they do look like quite young fellas, but you know, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I personally like to invest in teams that at least have some significant presence within that space that they're looking to ultimately broach into, but you know, they have that experience in order to actually run companies. Now here, the blockchain developer and the lead project director clearly have had companies in the past two startups that they've actually run. And then you've got the blockchain and software developer, Jackie Chan. So once again, founding engineer at blockchain consultancy. So Kokian Labs, um, contribute to MetaMask and Definity, which, you know, as we all know, MetaMask is a great um, wallet or well, Ethereum Explorer, uh, Ethereum Explorer, okay, it, it, I've got a great video on how to use it. Um, former software developer at Uber as well, so, you know, he certainly has that background. If we go further down, we've got their machine learning engineer, so they certainly have people who understand AI. You've got machine, you've got a number of machines, you've got, so you've got a couple of AI experts within here. Um, and then likewise, we've got Patrick Sun, system security engineer, so significant over 20 years of experience within that space. Remember, priving, having your data private is quite key. It's something that they certainly dwell on within their overall white paper. Um, and it is very important that they have someone who can back that up as well. In terms of they've got a labs team, so once again, you know, they've got significant background in AI. They've got additional machine learning engineers and software developers, multiple software developers. So they do have a fairly good team that has a significant amount of knowledge within the space that they're going into. So they're certainly not new to the market. And then as we go down, we've got advisors. These advisors I haven't necessarily heard of myself, but, you know, they have experience. They've got machine learning experience, big data analytics experience. We've got Gulliam Hute, 12 years in banking. We've got Michael Adesis, who's got a PhD in machine learning. So these guys clearly know what it is and what market that they're trying to go into. So it does give me that level of confidence that A, they have a team, a well-developed team who know what they're doing, and B, that they brought advisors on board who are also proficient within this space and have had significant time within this space as well, which is obviously key because these advisors would have built up partnerships and they will be able to unlock doors for the team to become 
more well known, you know, to grow that awareness, to grow that hype that some of these projects need in order to get out there and be noticed by others. As we go down, we've got Blockchain Advisor, who has previously advised. What have we got here? We've got Blockchain Advisor. Oh, fuck's sake. Moving on, we have Roderick Vander, who's their blockchain advisor. So 20 years within financial market experience, private equity, and obviously involved in crypto asset markets since 2014. So he's certainly been around for a significant portion of the crypto boom. Moving down, we've got machine learning. So they have a number of machine learning advisors. They've got certainly a good couple of blockchain advisors as well. Um, once again, we've got Stephen Cody Reynolds, so he's facilitated Binance, Binance's rapid use, so that's very good. Um, moving on, he's also been an advisor to Hybrid Block, which is quite a recent ICO, and I have seen pretty much every other pool raising um, funds for Hybrid ICO, so very well known, as well as head of operations for Procopolis. So at the end of the day, you know, the advisors... They've got some great all-round advisors with some significant experience within this space. Now, moving on, let's have a look at their roadmap because this is key. This is really going to tell you whether if they start raising funds for their ICO that they're going to be moving forward straight away or whether it's going to be a steady growth to getting to that all-time high. So we've got February 2016, Google published a research paper on federated learning, which is also good to see because ultimately they have a specific component within their overall protocol that deals with the federated results. So the federated learning that comes across. They've uh, got an AlphaGo beat in Sadol. They've got idea generation, decentralization in machine learning further publications in Google in April 2017. May 2017, last year, this is when they started the development of proof of concept. Then last year, September, they had the idea generation for the decentralized algorithms. And then we had the white paper released in December, just gone, so three months ago. Now, according to this roadmap, they've released their protocol, so their prototype. So this is always good. It's always good to hear if they've actually got a prototype out already. Um, or whether, you know, this is just more of a pie-in-the-sky type of white paper where they're talking about something that they plan to do once they have the funds to do it. So there's mention of a prototype. Now, I was within their Telegram community earlier. I did pose a number of questions around private sales, around coins, but also, more importantly, around where I could find this prototype that's mentioned within the white paper. Now, it does say February 2018. So that does make me potentially feel that maybe the prototype is not ready yet. I mean, we've just gone into March and I haven't seen anything of the prototype. And certainly this is something that you would shout about if you have that. So either the prototype is imminent or they're running behind on here. Right. So then moving on um, in March, they've got their token generation event. So they're looking to get their sale um, off going and also in terms of that space, they are also looking to release their decentralized or decentralized machine learning algo marketplace. So as you remember, that is one of their key components before they can actually do anything, which is before the customer can go ahead and run these algorithms, they need to be able to choose the algorithm in terms of what it is they want to run. The developers need to be able to post it somewhere as well. So certainly the marketplace is their first stop shop that they need to make sure that they have ready and up and running. And that is due this month. So there's quite a few things happening. And then as we then move down, they're looking April, May to actually get the Algo marketplace online. So really from May onwards is when they're really looking to start pushing out what it is that they have within their white paper. June, July, we've got the release of the protocol for Gen 1 Alpha. So that's the learning on device private data. And then as we go on, you know, we've got a significant amount of work ahead of us before they can really have a fully released product. So, you know, July, August, they've got their competition to grow and support developers so this is quite good i do like this the idea is that you put a competition out there you see what algorithm developers can come up with and ultimately they use that to draw in hype to draw in awareness 
but more importantly, to grow that marketplace and get some of those algorithms out there to get customers interacting and using that product to really see the real world use case from that. And then as we then move down, we've got December. So, you know, taking it to the next level. Ultimately, you know, you've, we've got a long way to go until they're able to deploy exactly what it is that they want to do. But certainly by the end of this year, they should have their generation one DML protocol up and running. So once again, for me, this seems like it could be more of a long hold mid to long term because they've serious, they've got significant milestones coming up you know predominantly pretty much every month they've got something happening so that's always good for the price it means that the price will continue to move upwards as long as they can bring that rhythm of development that constant rhythm of churning out new news ultimately to push the price of that coin up and to make it more usable and obviously ultimately people are investing in this to make money as well let's not kid ourselves people do invest in this to make money and also to use that um, one of the values of the token here is in order to be able to use this platform you need to be a token holder so ultimately the currency the dml token will be used to pay for services to buy services that's what the main fundamental use case of that token will be right so now let's have a look at the token metrics so is this something worthwhile investing in are the metrics good for us to invest in so if we move over we have token distribution right so what do we have here we have a total of 330 million tokens for distribution i like the sound of that it's it's a nice cap it will certainly give you a good increase the multipliers will be certainly there assuming that the project can deliver okay in terms of how that split at first when i looked at the 36 i thought that's a bit low actually in terms of the token sale but when i look at it further in fact what they've got is just over 54 percent available as part of the token sale they've got 36 percent that will be in the token sale they've got 9.9 percent of those tokens which will basically be there to ultimately go into the ecosystem the idea there being that there is a pool there is some liquidity in order to start encouraging those developers to use the service to get the service out there so that's kind of more generating and used for that hype and drawing in the community in the first place and then they've got another 8.3 percent that they're giving out as debug development protocol upgrades bonuses for the developer community so that basically means that those who are willing to use the system willing to test the system make the system better and evolve it through the use of customer insights and there's no better insight than customer insight really when it comes to evolving your products the customer is key you know they are awarded for that portion then you've got two and a half percent for PR, you've got 8.8% around strategic, you've got 15% in reserves and 19.5% for the team. So, so far, I like the token metrics. They work really well. This certainly is not a money grab at all. Now you might be thinking, well, what is the hard cap? What is the price of all of this? You know, 330 million, what is it that they're looking to raise? So if we move over to their token uh, metrics announcement on Medium, they've got, it's going to be an ERC20 token on the Ethereum network. So the only way you'll be able to contribute is from an Ethereum wallet, not from an exchange, guys, not from an exchange. Hard cap is 28,000 Ethereum. If we currently go by what Ethereum is trading at now, in coin market cap so that's 860 that will give us roughly about just over 24 million dollars that's not a bad cap hard cap to have at all so I do like that and then as I said before 54% of that is going to be available for the users um, or for those who want to buy so that's not bad at all now it appears that there was an early whitelist last week on the 24th whereby those who registered for the early whitelist 
were able to get a 10% discount on the token price. So I like that as well. Um, then following the, the following day, it's been opened up for the main whitelist registration. So from the 25th of Feb, as far as I'm aware, they are still accepting whitelist registrations at the time of creating this video. So get in if you want or are interested in this project or at least register. So one Ethereum will get you 3,780 DML tokens. So overall, I really like this. And what I also like here is this piece here vesting team vesting so the tokens being awarded to the team which make up the just say under 20 percent will be in a vesting period so it will not be unlocked it will be released to them over the course of three years so overall i really like the token metrics here they thought about it long and hard and you know it certainly is something that's appealing overall now let's have a look at the hype behind it so you know looking at the twitter following they've got a little under 1300 um, followers overall it's quite low in my opinion but you know it can be seen as an under the radar ico it certainly feels like that to me overall as we then move on we have the reddit community so the reddit community has around 89 readers once again quite low as well but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go by my previous statement. To me, this feels like a very under the radar ICO. Certainly the way they're looking to deliver this project, you know, through the use of mobile handsets is a first in this space. I haven't really seen much of that across the other AI projects that are currently out there. And then if we move into the Telegram community, they're not that far off from 10,000 users. So it's an okay and decent size. Looking at the Telegram community itself, there clearly aren't many spammers. There isn't much FUD being spread around. It does seem like a very collaborative community wanting to know more about the project overall, which I quite like. So final thoughts in terms of moving over. So we've got the radar chart and in my radar charts, I tend to really use this to gauge whether it's a project that I want to invest in, whether there are areas that they need to improve on in order to really become that all rounded project that can truly deliver. So if we start with the project at the very top, we've given that, well, I've given that a three and a half, Three, ultimately, because there are many AI projects out there, I'll give it the extra half point because I like what they're doing with the data handsets. That's much more of an outreach to your everyday user as well. So you can really tap into that human data element that's needed to really train some of these AI algorithms. Prototype, I've given it a five. I really liked what I saw in the prototype. They had a number of key functions working. In fact, it is pretty much end to end in terms of what it is that they're looking to deliver overall. So that really stood out and that's really key because they've got that released right at the right moment where they've got the whitelist out as well and registrations going in. So this should really give some confidence overall to the team. As we then go forward, we're looking at the team. So the team I've given it a four, they all are very well experienced. They clearly have a big background within this AI space as well. So, you know, they can certainly make that happen. Equally, the advisors that they brought on are also very well within this space as well. So that really helps in terms of getting the message out there, in terms of promoting that product within those specialist areas. So that really helps overall. Token metrics, I've given it a four. I was very impressed with the whole entire token metrics, the hard cap, the soft cap, the way they look to distribute. Even though it is just 36% of tokens that are available for the crowd sale, the remainder which kind of make up the 50% ultimately are pretty much within the liquidity pool to get more developers on board to start using the actual ecosystem to create algorithms to test algorithms so that's all there so it's not like the team's taking that for itself it's actually you setting that aside for development activities and then they've got roughly around percent they also have left is around bug development so that's really getting the community getting developers involved to use the product to report on bugs and get those fixes out as well so i like the way they're doing that ultimately it is all for the public and none for the team the vesting period for the team is very long so they're certainly not going to be going anywhere any day soon now, in terms of hype, I've given it a three. It's, it's, it's average or just under average in my opinion, but once again, that can be seen as a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing is it gives you the opportunity to get in on an ICO that's fairly under the radar in my opinion, but the bad thing is if you're looking for a short-term flip, 
then you know if there isn't enough hype behind that you're not going to get that push or liquidity on the exchanges when it hits so it really depends which way you're going for me i see this as a very medium to long term project which can certainly deliver in terms of what they're looking to do anyway guys i hope you really enjoyed the review if you have please give it a like and a thumbs up i would really appreciate that share the video share it amongst communities and if you didn't like it please let me know why leave a comment in the description below and I will be more than happy to get back to you and improve my future content. See you soon guys.